The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Newey Scruggs. All righty, it is Monday at Victory Monday for the Dallas Cowboys as they defeat the Washington football team at FedEx Field. You are in the Players' Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. Danny McCray, Barry Church, two former Dallas Cowboys free agent safeties. These are the players. I'm Dewey Scruggs, Cowboys reporter, just merely here to help move the conversation <laughs> along. Well, you talking about, talk about move the sticks? Something, something, something we couldn't no, do no. yesterday, huh? Yeah. Hey, hey, Ooh, hey, coming hey, out hot. Hey. Coming out hot. <laughs> I just want to begin the show by acknowledging Mike McCarthy wrote the check the players cashed it for. <laughs> so, can we at yeah. least give him that? Because I don't watch the Sunday shows. Um, I, I don't spend a lot of time on it, but I see the clips that will pop up on Twitter. So there are a lot of folks going after Mike McCarthy for what he said. So the biggest thing that people that I saw a lot of Sunday shows, ooh, Mike McCarthy guaranteed to win, and the Dallas Cowboys had their own benches, um, bench warmers for for the game. For, uh, for Which was clutch. Field. That was clutch. I, I ain't going to lie to you. I've been in a couple of games. Now, it wasn't as cold as the games I played in um, where we didn't have a heat warmer, but when those things go out, I mean – Cats get mad. Cats get frustrated. Like, what, what are we doing? We're, we're talking to Bucky. We're talking to Mike. Like, man, hold on. Get this thing working. What are we doing out here? It's cold as all heck. Because when you're cold, your fingers start getting numb. Toes start getting numb. You want nothing to do with that football field. So when that, when that heater goes out, I'm telling you, it, it's clutch. It's clutch to make sure you have your own one. And it always goes out in the weight games. Like, every time you go to somewhere else, it seems to always flicker and go out. So... I don't know, but I would have been frustrated if that thing was off. Listen, and, and I'm gonna just say this. All right, shout out to Mike McCarthy for for, for pulling off that guarantee. But I tell you this, I'm sure he was holding it real tight at the end of that game. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I say, oh man, I, I didn't I didn't fell asleep at halftime. I'm like, yeah, defense is rolling. We okay? We good? And then the second half comes around, and we do our usual thing, you know, start snatching people out of the game, don't play as inspired as we had been playing at the beginning, and then letting some people sneak back in the game. And then all of a sudden, that guarantee looked like it might have been at risk. And I was like, oh, please don't do this to Big Mike. Don't do this to Big Mike. Don't do it to him. I saw a little nerves on his face, but, but he pulled it out, man. So shout out to him. Shout out to the Cowboys for getting the dub. And we back on another victory Monday. Hey, man, uh, at certain points in time, I'm thinking if I'm McCarthy, I'm looking at I, – th- this is kind of where I miss Bill Parcells because there would have been a confrontation after Dak threw that interception. That they put them and they put Washington in the game. There would have been there would have been a confrontation. There would have been words. And Mike McCarthy just, just held it all in there. Most of all, they get the win. And no one, I mean, I didn't see any tweets or anything about the benches afterwards, though people were trying to play that whole thing up because it was 48 degrees, okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> so they, didn't, they didn't need the benches, but it's amazing on how many people wanted to make that a topic and say that the Cowboys were disrespectful <laughs> and that, that they, they inflamed the rivalry. And most of all, as Todd Archer pointed out and others later did, was that Seattle's operational people told the Cowboys, hey, guess what? Uh, those benches don't work. They went out on us, so oh well. So what did Jerry do? As a to me, as as a responsible and a good owner, he decided I'm not going to take the chance that Daniel Snyder and the folks at FedEx Field will have working benches. The league will allow us to bring in our own. So he rented them from a company in Cleveland who went and brought them down to the football game. So, and then they put their lo- they put the Cowboy logos on there. So uh, to me, this is where give Jerry Jones credit because he takes a lot of bullets. But give him credit for trying to make sure that his players were not going to be in a position of being cold if the weather turned a certain direction. 
I mean, you, you're right. Jerry's always been, you know, a player's guy. Like he's always looked out for his players for the most part. And I'm telling you, when you it's, it wasn't that cold, so it wasn't that big of a factor. But you want your players as comfortable as possible when they hit that football field. I mean, they're already putting their bodies on the line, crashing into each other, hitting each other, getting concussions, you know, tearing ligaments. So I mean, you got to make them as comfortable as possible. And by having a heated bench there. I mean, Jerry can afford it. He got all the money in the world. So to me, I you know, it wasn't a big deal. Get him on there, get him heated up, and get him ready to roll. Yeah, you listen. Let me tell you something, Jerry. Jerry, he remembers. Okay, that that year we went down to Chicago and everybody was freezing. <laughs> How we went out there and performed, all right? So he's like, listen, I'm not giving us no reason. My head coach made a guarantee, so I'm going to make sure that there is no reason or excuse for us not to go out here and win this game. So shout out to him. He put the pressure on. He put his money behind. Everything that he's talking about is like, I'm going to do whatever I can to get this team to win the Super Bowl, including bring our own heated bitches if we need to, all right? So he, he, he's cut no corners in this. So shout out to hey. Jerry, and you know he's serious about it. Hey, McCray. Hey, McCray, you was there that year. We went to Chicago. We, well, we got a, the butts kick. We got our butts kick. But then they cut off the hot water for the showers <laughs> afterwards. Man, we were taking – it was already, you know, close to below zero out there. They cut off the heat in the showers. Man, boys couldn't even take showers, man. It, it was – it was one of them deflating no. losses, man. I was no. Broke. Listen, you know, I went to I went to Chicago the next year. It's not that they cut it off. It was when it's that cold, you have to run that water for almost twenty four hours for it to be warm, right? Ooh. So of course they didn't go to our side of the locker room and be like, yeah, we're gonna do the Cowboys a favor. So they was like, yeah, we let them figure this out on their own. And that was some <laughs> freezing. That was probably the dirtiest I've been on a plane ride back home because I was like taking up one of those one of those kid washes. I just put the <laughs> towel under there a little bit yeah, and bounced exactly. my shoulder. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, that's all you do, man. Get some soap and a towel and just go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, no, that because that's all you can do. I was there that day, too. That was ridiculous, man. And I think it was Josh yeah. McCowan. Josh McCowan had one of them crazy days, man, as the quarterback. But I was, I, I was, woof. And, uh, yeah, I made, I made sure that I did not go back to Chicago unless I checked the schedule again because that was a December game. I was like, you will not catch me at Soldier Field in December ever again. And, and I think they went back, maybe it was two years ago, they went back and the weather was nice. It was later in the year, but it was, it was not anywhere close to, to what it was before. So the Cowboys get the win here, and uh, I, I think we can go ahead and act like uh, hanging with the boys in the break and just pat ourselves on the back because, <laughs> yeah. you know, do, do the way they always like to do that. But, but we were very right on the players' lounge talking about what we thought the impact would be and could be by getting Neville Gallimore, Tank Lawrence, Randy Gregory back, and how it could help Micah Parsons. The front seven was absolute, absolutely ridiculously wicked. Just looking at the game here, Washington 3 of 14 on third down, 29%, four turnovers for the defense, six possessions, all right? There were 14 possessions in the game for Washington offensively. Six of those possessions were three and out, seven punts. You could not really ask your defense to do much more than they did yesterday, in my opinion, at FedEx. Yeah, th- listen, the defense went out there. Shout out to Tate Lawrence also, by the way, who, who's been showing up for the last two weeks. Uh, Church's guy, Neville Gallimore, he's been hyping him up since last year. Last season, Church said Neville Gallimore was going to be one of those big-time players on the interior defensive line for us, and he is showing out. I seen him pull a, a Vita Vea and run straight through the center in one play. Right, Took it right back into the quarterback. Randy Gregory out here looking like a defensive back. Trayvon Diggs is rubbing off on everybody. Boys out here getting tip picks, tipping it to himself. You got Michael Parsons out here getting multiple sacks. The only thing that could have went better is Anthony Brown capitalizing on those two interceptions that he had. All right, and that lets you know that lets you know that he was in position to make the plays. And I'll take a PBU before I take a completed pass any day. So I think we all around went out there and played an amazing game. Unfortunately, uh, we continue to take our foot off the gas at the end and let these teams rack up yards and get these trash touchdowns and make the game a little bit more interesting than it should be. But our defense came to play yesterday, and I'm starting to see this attitude of, like, we are going to be the unit to carry us deep into the playoffs, not the offense. I think they took offense to everybody saying that as long as we had a middle-of-the-road defense, that we would be okay. They're like, nah, we're going to we gonna do more than that. We're going we gonna to be the people who carry this team into the playoffs, and they're going to have to respect our defense when they playing it against it and saying how they're going to beat us. Yeah, we talked about that, too. We talked about that, too. 
We talked about this too on the show is that the defense at this point is going to have to carry this team right now. That's where they're at. Go ahead, Church. Yeah, I had to let Danny get that in there because he, he was calling it from the beginning, man. He called it definitely, you know, back in March, talking about get Dan Quinn and how he's going to impact this defense. So definitely hats off to Dan Quinn. Danny called it right. This team, this defense, I mean, they're hitting on all cylinders right now. And like you said, Noah, we talked about it on the Players' Lounge with the big three, Parsons, Gregory, and D-Law out there. It's like picking your poison offensively. Like, if you slide the line one way, you're leaving all these other guys with one-on-ones. And it ain't just Parsons and Lawrence that you're leaving one-on-ones if you decide to slide the line to Gregory. Like you said, you got Neville Gallimore in there. Oh, Diggy Zua, Carlos Watkins. They're so deep on the defensive line, it's ridiculous. I mean, you can literally have a fresh set of defensive linemen rotate in there, and the play might drop off a little bit, but not significantly. So this this defense is rolling right now. Like you said, Randy Gregory picked off right where he left off. I mean, he had five sacks going into that, and then he had injured, missed three weeks, came back, got another sack, forced fumble, got another pick interception. The guy is all over the place. And what impressed me the most about this defense and this secondary was, there, like you said, everybody was in position. There was nobody, you know, busted coverages. You didn't see anybody complaining or pointing fingers. Everybody was there where they needed to be. And even if Washington was able to make the play or make a catch, it was contested. There was no yards after the catch. And what a job Diggs did on Scary Terry McLaurin. I mean, that matchup I thought was going to be a little scary for us, but three targets, zero receptions for McLaurin until he got hurt. I mean, this this dude, he did what he hasn't done all season. We know he's good for the interceptions. We know he's good to jump on something or break on a pass or anything like that. But he literally got in McLaurin's face and locked him down. He shadowed him, went right, left, wherever McLaurin was. Diggs was right there in his hip pocket. And I would love to see more of that as the season progresses. But this defense, man, you're right, McCray. They're carrying this squad right now. And right now, this is the formula for success. But I don't know if it can last too much longer when we start playing better teams. We think Diggs is going to get a second contract now? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you was right. You was right, Billy. You was right. But listen, the, the, the way that Diggs is playing right now, he continues this for the next couple of years. Yes, he, he will get a he will get a, a a second contract, and that's easy. That is easy. If, if if Dan Quinn is here, everybody on the defense is getting second contracts. All right, everybody because everybody <laughs> has elevated their game. What did I tell y'all about Tank? Give him the same time that the other players on the team have had with Dan Quinn, who is a defensive line specialist. Give him that same time and see what Tank Lawrence you get. And we are getting the the Tank Lawrence that the Cowboys paid for. And I can only imagine as he continues to get his feet under him, it continues to get in football shape, how good he's going to look. This is going to be an amazing defense. We have an opportunity to be something really, really special on the defensive end. And I think that that one has to go to Dan Quinn, but two has to go to the players for, for buying in as well. Uh, agree with you 100%. 100%. And I want to I want to emphasize this very much, and taking nothing away from what Tank and Randy Gregory did in defensive line defensive end spots because they were fantastic, but you saw what Neville Gallimore could do as a defensive tackle, and why I was I was talking about how good he had looked at camp that he was their de- best interior defensive player. How he was moving that center around. I mean, and plus he had those those sweet Air Jordans on, so he got the Jordans yeah. on there. <laughs> and he's the the moves. I mean, right? He just. <laughs> I mean, so you got him on the center. Next thing you know, they got Michael Parsons, you know, going in, you know, blitzing off his hip pocket. I mean, um, that's what happens when you can can have a, a, a presence up front in that interior line. They tell you, Gibson, here was his numbers. 10 attempts, 36 yards, man. That, that's what he did. They just, as a team, Washington had 23 touches for 100 yards. But you and I saw it. There was nothing effective. They couldn't get their run game going at all. And Gibson last year... Was I think he had his two career highs against the Cowboys, so they shut that down. And once you saw that, it allowed, in my opinion, once you shut the run down, now they got to throw it. And this is where you saw Tank, you saw Randy, you saw Parsons. I mean, that poor kid out there, man, Taylor Heineke saw ghosts. I mean, they, they, I mean, literally, they beat him up. He had to leave the game. And that sack where Parsons came in and picked him up and put him down, <laughs> whew, I mean, that was vicious, man. That was vicious. 
it, it was definitely filthy how they did it. And and like you said, last year, Antonio Gibson, he rushed for 243 yards and I think three or four touchdowns against us in two games. And then this year, you, you fast forward to what we got going on now. That combination of Neville Gallimore, Odigizua, Carlos Watkins, I mean, Tristan Hill in there. That interior defensive defensive line right there, it really sewed it up. And it allowed, like you said, that D-line to pin their ears back. What are you going to do when you have a, a package like that where you got D-Law on one side, Gregory on the other side, pinning their ears back? You got Micah Parsons just roaming the front line. You don't know where he's going to pressure or where he's going to come. It just leaves too many one-on-ones for the offensive line. And if you don't get that ball out quick, I mean, these guys are hunting. They're head hunting out there. And it's a scary sight, man. Real scary listen, sight. Listen, listen, and I'll say this. One, one of the biggest differences that you – that it, it's been so obvious. When Tank Lawrence and when Randy Gregory were not in the game and you watched the, the other teams plan on how they were going to attack us in the run, they were attacking the edges. People were not staying outside. You would see runs break outside all the time because you would see the defensive ends – Get a little nosy, they will peek inside, and then the run will pop outside for, for 8 to 10 yards. You are not seeing that anymore. You got two veteran guys out here who are playing their responsibility and rushing the passer. And I'll say this for the defense. Church, you named all those guys, right? All the, the Carlos Watkinses, Tristan Hills, right? When you have a defense that is playing this way, that puts the onus on those guys, those rotational guys, to come in and make sure that they play up to the standard, right? When you looked at it last year, there was no standard for these guys to come in and play up to. Now, when you start saying stuff like, hey, man, we got a guy like Parsons, we got a, pal like, we got a guy like Tank and Randy, Randy Gregory, when, when those guys come in the game, they know what's expected of them. And I think you can see that through the entire secondary, through the linebackers, and you can see it on the defensive line. I really, I just think it's, it's, it's a total 180 from what we saw last year, and that's, that's the exciting part about it. All right, uh, let's take our first break. There's a game ball I want to give uh, give out, and fans out there won't really notice it, but I know when I mention who it should go to, Danny and Barry will say yes. And what's going on with Dak Prescott? Is it mental? Is that what's going on? Possibly decision-making? Let's dive into that next on the Players' Lounge. It's brought to you by Hotels.com right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. (laughs) And if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem like me. Not available in every state based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Back to the Players' Lounge. Dak Prescott is the Dallas Cowboys nominee for the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide, recognizing NFL players for outstanding community service activities off the field and excellence on the field. Help Dak earn $25,000 in a donation to his Faith Fight Finish Foundation by voting on Twitter. Tweet hashtag 
W P M O Y Challenge, followed by Prescott through January 17th. Vote DAC. You are in the Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels.com. I am Louis Scruggs, along by joined along a side former. Cowboys safeties, free agent safeties, by the way. They, they, they didn't work first-round picks. They had to earn their way up here. Um, Dang, very got it out the mud, as they say, man. And, 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 and Danny McCray. So we all were praising the defense at, at last segment, as we should have. They were outstanding. A game ball needs to go to Britt Brown because yeah. Britt Brown, who we've seen as we go do this podcast, you see out at the star all the time working to get guys back. Neville Gallimore hadn't played since the preseason. So not only did they help get him back, Britt and the staff, but you saw him effective. You know, Tank Lawrence, who, who broke his foot after the first game, I mean, he's back and effective. And that's the kind of thing that's made. you got to give a guy a game ball like that because what, what kind of price tag can you put on getting guys back and having them be effective? You guys have worked with Britt as well, so you know what he can do. I mean, the, the guy is a hell of a trainer, man. And that's why, I mean, that's why he's been doing it for, what, 25 plus years now? I mean, he's amazing at his job and what he does. And it, it just, it's just amazing because he, he brought these guys back. They had such lengthy, you know, injuries. They were out, what, I think D-Law was out maybe 10 weeks, Neville Gallimore even more. And you saw out there, their endurance was good. It wasn't like they were huffing and puffing or out there just on one knee, can barely go, subbing in and out. They were out there good and performing well in, in dire situations. So you got to love his training ability to get these guys back in shape and back on the field and having some of their best games out there. And I just reflect back to when I tore my Achilles. You know, I did a whole year of rehab with Britt. I came back in 2013 and had, the, you know, one of the best seasons of my career. So shouts definitely goes out to Britt Brown and Jim Maurer and those boys because they definitely know what they're doing. And they get these guys back as soon as possible and sometimes better than uh, they were when they left. Yeah, I, I'm gonna second everything that Church just said. Uh, you know, for, for, for the injuries that I that I sustained when I was playing Britt and and, and, and Jim and, and, and G Money, they all took care of me when I was in there. But I'll say just to add on, I think that one of the most important things that they're able to do is get these guys back when they're ready to come back. Right? You don't you don't often see us put that put guys back in there when it's too early, and you don't see them sitting out for too long, right? It, it seems like they always come back right on time to where you don't see them suffer those same type of injuries again. Um, so shout out to them for being able to do that. And you have to gain the trust of the players in order for them to be able to have that, that belief that you're doing the right thing and taking care of them the right way. You don't see a lot of people going to get uh, second opinions uh, on, on the Cowboys training staff either because they trust what that what that staff is doing. So you know they're great, and shout out to all of them, but they got our guys back and ready to go, and I'm hype about it. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and this defense, as we were talking about, may have to go ahead and carry the Cowboys down the stretch as they get ready to go to MetLife Stadium to face the Giants, then host Washington the day after Christmas on NBC Sunday Night Football, then host Kyler Murray and the Cardinals before ending the season at Philadelphia. The offense, on the other hand, has got some issues. I'm just sitting right now looking at how they were 1-6 in, in the red zone. There were six punts in the 14 possessions on offense that the Cowboys had. In the fourth quarter, in five drives, there were three punts. In those three punts, they were three and outs. And then you had an interception in the football game. The Cowboys win 27-20, but the second half was ugly. And Dak Prescott completed 22 of 39 for 211 yards, one touchdown, two picks with a QB rating of 58.8. Guys, what's going on? Man, I'm gonna tell you like this. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like this, okay? Let me, let, I'm gonna keep it straight. We've been talking about this run game, okay, from week one, all right? And if you're not able to do it, you're going to continue to be in these situations. If you look at that runs a bootleg and throws an interception, the linebacker doesn't even look like he bit on the run fake. You know why? Because you ain't got no run game. I mean, you're, the reason that you're able to run bootlegs is because you have established the run or the defense believes that you are going to run the ball. Same thing with screens. The only reason you can run a screen is because somebody you believe that somebody's uh, putting some pressure on you because that's, that's, that's the illusion that you're giving off. There's no illusion with our run game, all right? And the thing is, I, even with Zeke Hamper uh, on Sunday, I still believe that we had a chance to continue to get some of those runs. He, he wasn't moving as fast as he, as he usually does. 
was, but he was getting some positive, some positive runs. You just want to keep the defense honest. And I think that still oftentimes in drives, we moved away from the run. Or we'll start with a deep pass on first down. And, and before you know it, you're behind the stick, so you got to throw it on second and third, and it didn't work out for us. Dak has looked off. He has looked off. I'm not sure what's going on with him. Some of his placement on some of the balls have been off. His decision-making in some instances have been off as well. I'm not sure what's going on. If he doesn't trust what's in front of him, uh, he needs to be able to move in the pocket a little bit better, uh, scramble a little bit more. It's, it's a lot that he can do uh, to get better. But overall, I think this really hinges on our offensive line and our ability to run the, uh, run the football. Yeah, you're right about that. I, I'm, I'm with you on running the football and it's tough. It's tough to do it because, you know, when we don't, we don't know when we're going to get back Tony Pollard. He has that foot injury. And, and Zeke just hasn't looked himself since he's been injured. As we can tell, he's, he's still laboring around out there. And sure. and it's not like we can we can rest him because we have who do we have behind Clement. I mean, Clement, he came in and did a, a couple good things. But is he a featured back? Is he a guy we can turn around and hand the ball off to 25 times a game? I don't know. I mean, he's never had that type of situation in his career. But we've got to find somehow, some way to at least have the threat of running the football. I mean, it's just, but right now with our two lead backs hurt, it's, it's a hard thing to do. And like McCray said, when, when you don't have any type of threat of the run game and you're trying to get the ball out of your quarterback's hands quickly, the whole defense is just sitting back and watching. You can't really, you know, do an RPO or fake the run and do a quick bubble screen because nobody's going to bite up on that. And like that, that, uh, that bootleg McCray was talking about, he had a defender in his face, but... It's like the, the linebacker got so much depth under there because nobody was forced to bring him up. He had, if you watch it, he didn't even take one step towards the line of scrimmage. As soon as the ball was snapped, he turned and knew something was coming his way and got underneath that over route by um, Dalton Schultz on that one. So I don't know if it's the creative play call from Kellen Moore, if, pe- if defensive coordinators have caught up to him and caught up to how he likes to call plays or whatever the case may be, but something has to change. And, and like McCray said, Dak Prescott looks off. You know, ever since that calf injury, I'm going to say it, I mean, he just hasn't looked right. Whether it's accuracy, just timing with the receivers, whatever the case may be, he just has not looked right. Because if we're being honest here, he should have thrown four interceptions yesterday. I mean, that first drive going out there, he hit the corner dead in his hands. I mean, it looked just like Anthony Brown out there. He hit him dead in his hands, (laughs) was nowhere near the receiver on that one. And then you fast forward to, I think, the third quarter, and he threw that screenplay when when you know as a quarterback, and I'm sure he knows this, if the screen is covered up, if D linemen are all over it, you know, hey, we don't have a play here. Let's just throw it in the dirt. Instead, he, he tried to take a risk, and I don't know if he tried to sidearm it in there. I don't know what he was trying to do, but it hit the D lineman right in the numbers, and thank goodness he dropped the football. But he, he could have had four interceptions out there. I'm not sure what's going on because it doesn't seem like he's getting a lot of pressure. Like, I feel like, you know, maybe there's opportunities here and there where he has to run a little bit, but. It's not like he's getting running for his life out there. I feel like he has he has a pocket enough to do some damage out there. So I'm not so sure if it's the receivers not getting open, if it's the play calling, but whatever the case may be, that that definitely needs to step his game up if we're gonna think we're gonna have a long playoff run. Because I'm telling you now, once we get to the playoffs, we're not gonna run into too many Taylor Heineke's. There's gonna be a lot of Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady's, and those sorts. So we're definitely gonna need an A game from Dak Prescott. I, I, I'll say this. I'll say this too, man. You know, when, when you want to help out your quarterback and you want to, if you're not going to run the ball, you want to give us some easy throws. And I just, as I'm watching the Green Bay Packer game yesterday and I'm looking at Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams and how the game becomes so easy for them, right, when you have that number one guy who you can depend on to get open. You see the the, the, the quick slant in the end zone. Easy pass. You don't even have to call a play. Hey, man, we got Devontae one-on-one. He's going to run quick slant. He's going to catch that ball in the end zone. Same thing at the end of the game. Quick out. He, you know he's going to be open. It's easy throw for a guy so he can get into rhythm. And I just haven't seen us be able to do that, which is why I always hearken on this Amari Cooper being our number one receiver. You have to have a guy who, you, when, when things are going bad, you can lean on this guy and say, this guy's going to be open. And we have not, it looks like we haven't schemed uh, scheme that so so you don't see it when, when we get into these situations where hey man you gotta have it what are we gonna do it seems like it's a schemed up play uh, concept versus hey man this is our player who we're gonna lean on to get us this get us this first down <sighs> there are definitely some things that have got to get fixed around there confidence is obviously one thing for Dak Prescott I had Jacques Taylor on my TV show last night, and, and Jacques said in a conversation he had with Dak Prescott that Dak talks about, yeah, you know what, I, I can lose confidence. He says, you know, we're all human. And I think something where 
fans don't always want to acknowledge is yeah, quarterbacks are a lot like pitchers. You're going to go through some bad streaks, okay? You, you are. It, it happens. And it's how do you get out of that? And so I don't know whether this is the, the combination of Kellen Moore helps um, the offensive coordinator or whether it's the offensive line. Uh, when we come back, there is an issue, possibly two issues with the offensive line as they get ready to face the Giants. they got to go up to MetLife Stadium. We'll dive into that with Danny McCray, Barry Church. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is the Players' Lounge. Brought Sounds to you by like com. On. A recurring issue. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is DallasCowboys.com. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a broken traffic light. Stop and go is the name of my game. It's easy. You go, they go. What was it? They go, you go. <laughs> and if you have the wrong car insurance, these repair costs could stop you in your tracks. So get Allstate's new low auto rate and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Not available in every state based on coverage and limits selected. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone, new and existing customers, our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back, Back. to the Back. Players' Lounge. Send your favorite Dallas Cowboys players to the 2022 Pro Bowl. Vote for each player by visiting NFL.com slash Pro Bowl or by tweeting and retweeting posts with hashtag Pro Bowl vote and the player's name. Vote for your Dallas Cowboys today. This is the Players Lounge. We have two former Dallas Cowboys safeties, Barry Church and Danny McCray in the house. I'm Louis Scruggs. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's talk about... The the offensive line. There's there's one thing that you guys are going to be happy about, and that is how the line responded when Dak Prescott got pushed on the sidelines. Lel Collins uh, came to his defense, threw a punch, and he was ejected. That was a lot different than what we saw <laughs> last year when Andy Dalton was getting thrown around and people were just like looking at him like, oh, that's not right. <laughs> This dude knew it. This dude sure, knew sure, it. Sure, sure. This dude. So, Come on, do it. <laughs> Now, here comes an issue as you start to get ready for the game against New York. Will the NFL suspend Collins for a punch? And so that means if he's suspended, you got a right tackle issue. Tyler Smith left the game, has an ankle injury. If he doesn't play, then you're going to need a left tackle. So you could need two tackles, which the Cowboys, oh, by the way, had their backup tackles out there at the end of the game. They could need two tackles going into this Giants game. So, fellas, this is something to think about, especially as we talked about trying to get the run game fixed with two running backs who are not 100% help. Danny? Uh, I, I, listen, I, I know you better not be giving a, a, a layup collars. No, no, no points for going out there throwing a punch and getting ejected. <laughs> All right, I know you better not be doing that. I don't, I don't, I don't have nothing about different attitude or none of that. It's a different way to get that type of stuff handled. You ain't got to throw no punch. You know why? You don't need to throw no punch because you already missed five games. You already missed five. You missed five already. 
what are we doing? Like, what, what are we doing? It, well, it does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. I've seen players defend their quarterback and not get ejected from games. I've seen it happen. You do not have to get ejected to show that the offensive line is there for their quarterback. You don't have to do it. Because like you said, now you have an issue where you possibly don't have either tackle. Right. Right? You talk, you talk, you talk about going on a run. You're talking about making it deep into the playoffs, getting the offense back on track. This is, this is what you're trying to do, but at the same time, you're also missing players who are key parts of it, where the, where the coaches put you in a position to say, you got your starting job back because we don't know why, but you got it back. <laughs> and, 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 and now and now, now you, you might be suspended again. I mean, I just, it don't make sense. But shout out to him for having Dak back and Zeke and all that stuff. I just wish he would have found – a, a, a different way to do do a chest bump, do something. You ain't got to you ain't got to punch nobody, man. The, you the, do funny that. Is, the funny part about it, man, is is when they closed up, when they did the close up on him. You can, he was he was his, he was trying his hardest not to swing. Like he was like, oh, I can't. <laughs> and then just the instincts and just I don't know what it was just took over. And when that dude ducked his head, he definitely swung a little uppercut in there and caught him one. But like you said, D Mac, he could have did what Zeke did, ran in there, just gave him a little chest bump, push, push, and just you know separated things like that. We've seen it all the time in practice when guys really don't want to fight; they just kind of grapple each other, hold each other up by the by their jersey, like, "Oh no, you swing first, you swing first, take your helmet off." He could have did one of those, but the instincts took over. He decided to take that swing, and uh, hopefully, the NFL doesn't swing and try to suspend him. So, ah, it puts us in a, a shaky situation, but. He's been, he's been doing this before. He put us in a shaky situation earlier in the season when, uh, you know, we know what happened. So, ah, man, he, he just can't seem to find his way out of trouble. I'll say that. Who started the downfall of this offensive line? Who did it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, unless you brother, man. No, 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 listen, no, I, I, I want to I see him play. I'm just saying, this is, this started, okay, we had, a, we had a bad left guard, you know what I'm saying, but he did go against some, some top-notch competition. He was getting walked back into the, into the quarterback. <laughs> but... But but as far as shuffling guys and trying to figure out how we gonna protect each side, it, it, we know when it started. Mm. Well, Do you game, disagree? Game game one when when Zach Martin missed because of the COVID, there there's just been one issue after another with this offensive line all season long. If we're just going going back to game one of not being able to have the guys you thought you'd have out there. And then when you put some of the guys out there, you're like, ooh, we got a problem with the left, we got the problem with the left guard, and then you got issues with the center. I mean, um, this when the season ends, uh, it'll be very interesting to see what kind of conversations Joe Philbin, Mike McCarthy, and Will McClay have. Because frankly, I thought this unit would be a lot better than what it's been this year. Um, so there's issues, and look, there's another issue coming up this week, and it's about who's going to be available and who will be healthy if they are available for this football game. So, um, they, they've good got thing we're going against the Giants, man. So this good offensive man. line, the quarterback, you, and, and then the running backs are healthy. So this offense has some issues right now, guys, and you just hope. And this is where you're paying people a lot of money uh, as coaches. Fix it. Figure out how you fix it and get with your players because right now what you have is not going to take you very far in the playoffs. Not nah, I see right that. now. Not off the <laughs> I right see. Now. I saw Tampa, man. They were firing that uh, that blitz up against Buffalo. I'm just telling you, it's some, it's some it's some defenses you do not want to see if your offensive line is not at, at, at full strength. All right, moving into the playoffs when you start playing some of these better teams, we've seen we've seen us uh, have trouble with teams in the AFC. Uh, we've seen us have trouble with the Saints uh, you know, offensively. If you look at a team like like Tampa right now, who who is they're starting to catch fire a little bit on defense. It, this, this, this is not a recipe for success for us. We have to find a way to get the five best playing and make sure they're healthy and ready to go. This is the challenge, and this is why you pay coaches a lot of money. This is where, where Mike McCarthy and Joe Philbin and and uh, Skip Pete and Kellen Moore and Doug Nussmeyer, I mean, the, all this, this group of guys, these coaches, man, this is where they, they've got to go ahead and, and figure out how, how they address the warts. I remember talking to Duck Collins, uh, the former coach of the Chicago Bulls, and he was working at TNT at the time. He was talking to a group of people, and he said, hey, guys, your job as a coach is to find the warts and cover up the warts. So sometimes you can't fix everything because you know, it's just how sports works, and sometimes your, your players and what you have is what you have. So how do you cover it up? And that's, to me, the challenge for the Cowboys right now on offense is just figuring out how do you cover it up. And maybe you can 
become what Kansas City's become. Because one thing I noticed, uh, and I don't know how much you guys have watched this, so you saw Kansas City struggling with the defense. They get guys healthy. Get guys healthy now, boom, now they're playing well. But at the same time, the offense was going through a couple of issues. And then yesterday against the Raiders, the offense just broke out. They went crazy. And now you look at Kansas City and you say, you know what? Man, that, that could be a team that could win the Super Bowl um, the way they're playing on both sides of the football. Hadn't seen their defense play that well in the last three, four years. So, Kansas City ran the ball yesterday. And yes, they did. And, and maybe, yes, they maybe, did. And Tina doesn't normally like to run the ball. So maybe the Cowboys in these next four football games can find some of that. And guys, let's be honest. If they go beat the Giants and they beat Washington, and then you get into a great shootout with Arizona and come away with that one, you're going to look at this team a whole lot different. A whole yeah. lot different. Because now they're going to be sitting here with three more wins. You know, now you're talking about a, a team with 12 wins in, in the back. Yeah, the well, I thought... Well, I thought you're going to look at them different, um, especially if they're able to rattle off these next, what, three? Because Arizona, it goes New York, Washington, Arizona. Am I correct with that? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, so if you're able to rip these next three off and it puts you in great position to even challenge for that number one spot as far as the NFC contender is in the playoffs, then we are looking at this team totally different. Now, the question I want to ask both of y'all is, do y'all feel like, Let's just say we do rattle these off, we, we rattle these wins off, but we're having that same type of formula where the defense is carrying us, they're taking the football away. Our offense has been so-so, but they haven't really, you know, just cost us the whole game. Do you feel like that formula could work and, get, and lead to a long-term uh, a long -term playoff run? I do. Um, I mean, like I said, if, if, in my opinion, you have to have something to lean on. When you're, when you're, like I said, when your passing game's not not working, but if you can't lean on your offense at all, then your defense has to be able to make some type of plays for you. What we know about our defense is they are giving us extra possessions. They can even score the ball. What we know about our special teams is at any point, you know, Bones, as much as he, he does does some crazy stuff, we can block a punt. We can get a uh, we can get some type of fate going, so we still have opportunities to make stuff happen. But as long as our defense can keep us in the game, I still have faith that our offense can can get a score when they need to. I mean, I don't think we have to score. It's it's great for us not to have to score thirty to win. So yeah. I, I I think the recipe for success for us is that that New York Giants type of type of uh, defense that you talked about when they had those four guys up front and they could rush with four and then and then just play coverage on the back end and shut guys down. I think that if we're able to do that, we, we got a chance to beat just about anyone. The red zone efficiency is a problem, guys. And and that even you go back and you look at the New England win that they had up at Foxborough, um the Cowboys just gotta be better in terms of, of getting points. I mean one of six yesterday in the red zone. I mean that that that's just you know, that that's good enough to beat a Taylor Heineke, but that's not good enough to beat you know a Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers or some of these other folks that you can potentially face in the playoffs. So they got to fix this. Just looking here at the the ball possession and drive chart in the second, just in the second half alone, um, the first one was a nine play drive which ended in a punt. Then it was a four play drive which ended in a punt. Then. Uh, they got the football off a fumble at the Washington 25 and then only went 15 yards and had to kick a field goal. Then you go into the fourth quarter. Cowboys, three and out, punt. Next possession, three and out, punt. Then they get the ball at their own 22, pick. Then the next possession, three and out, punt. And then they got the ball after a fumble by the defense and then it was the, and they ran the clock out. Um, four, four, you know, five drives in the fourth quarter, three of them punts and a pick. Now this is where the offense has got to go ahead and fix these things. And maybe Washington, I'm not Washington, but maybe New York is the excellent opponent to go ahead and start fixing these things. But that's what I look at, guys, when I just see what has to happen is they've got to be better about using the clock and generating points when they get in the red zone. Your defense is out here giving you the football back, and you're only giving them three points. I mean that's. That cut it yesterday, but if you're trying to talk about having any kind of playoff run that's, that's lasting longer than a game, that, the, that those areas have got to improve. Yeah, you, you got to improve in your red zone, and like we talked about earlier, they they got to improve on first down. I mean, when you can get you know three four yards on first down, second down, get some more positive plays, it makes it a lot easier when you're third and manageable. When you're in third and threes, third and fours, third and fives. You can have a high percentage of third down conversions when it's that low and that manageable. But what we've seen in these past couple games with the run not being where it's at, 
those first down, those first down runs or those first down plays, they're not very positive. You may get one or two yards, then you're looking at a second and long, and it ends up being a third and long. And that's when we've been suffering at these third down conversion races when it's over five yards or where it's over 10 yards. So I feel like if we can get better on first down, maybe find a way to get this run game going. I'm not sure how we do it. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know how we're going to do it. But if we're able to find some way to get that going, I think it could prove dividends for this offense. But right now, they're, they're, they're stagnant. They're, they're stuck in neutral right now. How, how do you get your run game going? <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it like, it like it's easy. I'm no offensive coordinator, but I can tell you one thing. When you're playing defense, misdirection and the illusion of a ball going one way and then you hand it off to somebody else, that can help you. Like jet sweeps can help you. It, when, they're, when teams are running zone or they're running man and you get somebody jet sweep across the uh, formation – it changes everything, right? So you're going to have to get creative. You're going to have to get some of that Sean McVay type of stuff going to where you're kind of confusing the defense, making them check their reads, making them just slow down just a little bit to give you that extra extra piece of space. And I haven't seen us do it since uh, C.D. Lamb, I think, came out of the backfield. And what he, I think he might have scored a touchdown in that play, but I'm not sure. But we, we, we're going to have to get creative with our run game. All right. Sounds like uh, Kellen Moore's got some work to do, especially if he's trying to get a head coaching job after this season in the National Football League. So offense has got some issues, and the quarterback's got to be a little bit better. But right now, Dan Quinn in the defense, and also Bones of special teams units, they've got the Cowboys playing uh, at, at, a, at a level that has nine wins and a three-game lead in the NFC East. So on a victory Monday, let's not lose sight of that as we wrap up this show. That's true. The Cowboys are in the they're, – they are where they want to be. There's areas to fix, but right now they're where they want to be. Hey, listen, hey, and before we get off of here, okay, because I know Church wanted to say it. Joe Burrow had a hell of a game yesterday, okay? He left, <laughs> he left his team. He left his team on the field, right? He, they left the field with the lead, and his, and his defense couldn't get him right. You know, he, he brought his team all the way back. Him and Jamar Chase single handedly got him in the game. He had 348 yards. 24 for 32, something like that. He had a hell of a game, and they just didn't win. Joe, uh, but, you know, uh, Herbert got the dub. Congratulations to him. But, but what happened with Burrow and then when it was 0-0, when the game was right there in the balance? He shouldn't have had to bring him back what? like that. See, this see is Herbert, football, bro. Herbert, Herbert ain't doing none of that. He's starting it from the jump, man. You see what he's doing out there. And you know what? I, you know, I don't got to say it. You know, Herbert speaks for himself. Through these first two seasons, he's definitely been better than Burrow. We'll see going forward. That's not right true. Now. Right now, Herbert's been better. These first two Listen, years, Herbert has been better. Let, let me tell you this, Dewey. And you might not agree with it, but I'm telling you, if that keep playing the way he's playing, that comeback player of the year would not be his. I'm just I, – I, and, and, and I mean it. I, well, I would told you that Joe Burrow was going to be in the running for it, and he's playing good – he's playing really good football right now. He has his team, the Cincinnati Bengals, in position to possibly go to the playoffs and win the division. I mean – you, that you, you can't understate how how important that is for a guy playing for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Okay, guys. Might have an uh, argument. We're, we're, we'll we'll have to continue that next time and add in a little bit of Urban Meyer as well as we get to oh. the Cowboy talk. <laughs> this has been the Players Lounge, brought to you by Hotels dot com for Chris Beam, our producer, Danny McRae, Barry Church, I'm Dewey Scruggs. We'll chat to y'all Tuesday, everybody. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club.